What's up, everyone? I'm Giovanni. Welcome back to another Coin Telegraph live stream show. Today, I have the pleasure to be joined by Ian Martins, CEO of Ather Labs, and uh, Alex Nascimento, member of the blockchain faculty at the University of California and founder of 7CC Blockchain Investment. How are you doing, guys, today? Excellent. Uh, pleasure to be talking to you again, uh, also with uh, Professor Alex and all the audience. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure. Thanks, Giovanni, for having us. Uh, great to be here and fantastic to chat with, the, with everyone around the world listening to us. Yeah, that's a pleasure. So uh, just to introduce you guys. So for those who don't know, in a nutshell, uh, Hathor is an open source blockchain architecture on which users can create their own token. And uh, basically today, Hathor is launching a new initiative called, uh, the, uh, called Hathor Green, an initiative to encourage the usage of renewable energy practices for Bitcoin mining. Uh, so before we start the conversation, I would like to remind our audience that this is an interactive uh, live stream show. So please write your comments in the chat and uh, I will ask our guests, uh, especially considering that this is a very important topic because we, we are talking a lot about this uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, renewable energy issue that uh, Ather is uh, going to tackle and is explaining how today. So let's get, let's get into it. Ian, maybe you would like to just uh, go a little bit more in details about what Ather Network is. Uh, sure, thank you, Giovanni. Uh... As you said, uh, we are an easy to use blockchain that at the moment uh, it's super easy to issue your own token. Uh, we are based on the uh, PhD work of our CTO, uh, Dr. Marcelo. Uh, he proposed back in uh, 2018 a new architecture for distributed ledger uh, technologies uh, where there's a combination of a DAG of transactions and uh, a traditional blockchain. So. We do have blocks and we also do have mining. Uh, it's very important for us. Uh, we also uh, use uh, proof of work as consensus uh, mechanism, the same as uh, Bitcoin, uh, which is why we're here to talk about a bit about uh, mining and uh, green mining. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, in a nutshell, that's it. Great. So now that people understand what uh, Ather Network is, now we can go into the actual initiative that you are launching today, which is uh, Hathor Green. So can you tell us a little bit about this initiative? Uh, how did you come up with it? And what is the goal of this initiative? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, as much as uh, I'd like to uh, take credit for it, I cannot because this is uh, uh, an idea of one of our closest advisors, uh, uh, Rod. So. Uh, uh, he's uh, very much into mining and uh, with all this debate that's been going on uh, with the energy use and uh, the, the, um, the origin of the energy used, um, uh, he proposed that uh, we incentivize the miners that use renewable energy because, I mean, I think we can go a bit uh, into the debate of uh, energy use in Bitcoin, but uh, I think everyone can agree um, that using renewable energies for that uh, is a good thing. Uh, despite if we think that uh, the energy consumption is too high or not. But I think everyone can agree that uh, green um, energy being used is, is a good thing. So uh, he proposed that uh, we incentivize miners uh, for doing that. And uh, what's the best way to do that if not giving them uh, extra incentive? So that's the basic idea of Hatter Green that uh, we're launching today. It's, let's say, for these uh, first couple months, uh, it's a pilot. We also want to see... Uh, what we're going to get in terms of adoption and, uh, and you know, uh, understanding with the miners if this is an important thing. So basically, uh, any miner that uses renewable energy to uh, mine Hatter, and at the same time, since we support emerging mining, they're going to be mining uh, Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin SV. Uh, he'll be able to receive uh, extra rewards uh, in HTR, our native token. So he's, uh, in a sense, incentivized to a good behavior to using uh, renewable energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we're going to get deeper into this concept of uh, merged mining uh, a little bit later, because this is like, crucial to, to make people understand what is the point 
of this initiative. Yeah. But first, I would like to ask Alex, uh, what do you think of this idea of uh, incentivizing miners to use uh, renewable energy? Is it, uh, is it like the most uh, um, viable option to solve Bitcoin's environmental problem, according to you? Uh, very good question, Giovanni. Thanks. I, I think that there is two things we're facing now in the world, right? We're, we're coming to a global understanding that climate change is a major problem and it should be at the front uh, row seat of any kind of major government, uh, agency, investor, corporation. It's definitely a problem where, where all humanity should be tackling. As Bitcoin and other, and other cryptocurrencies are becoming more popular and certainly having a wider global adoption, that, those, two, those two topics are converging, right? And then now we're trying to figure it out, how do we minimize the footprint of cryptocurrency mining and processing? And it's not only cryptocurrencies, it's kind of like any kind of a data center or any kind of large consumption of energy. So just a few data points. I, I don't know if you guys had a chance to read the recent um, Bank of America report on, on climate change and, and cryptocurrencies. We're getting an increase of about 40 million tons of carbon emissions in the last two years. That's about almost 9 million cars on the road, equivalent to, right? Uh, if you would look at Bitcoin mining, that that energy consumes more than the countries of Greece, Chile, or Czech Republic. So that's that's a problem we as an industry and uh, are trying to tackle. And the program of uh, Hathor Green is one of the greatest initiatives in the space that I have seen so far. As an investment firm, we're taking a very close look on how we can work with ESG funds to allocate funds into the space. And ESG is projected to go to over $50 trillion in the next four years. So a lot of money, a lot of incentives are looking at the space. And I think Hawthorne Green is a good, good bridge um, to bridge that kind of interest, that kind of incentive into our industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those, those are all very good points. I, I'm just seeing that I have a, we have a question from the audience. It's not exactly related, directly related to the Ather, Ather Green initiative. It's more about the uh, future plans of Ather Network. So uh, what are the next plans for Ather Network? Ian, maybe you can just quickly remind our, your audience about the next milestones that your, your projects hope to achieve. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, we do have our uh, roadmap and we have a medium post detail in it. Uh, also, we are coming to around on uh, Q2, so uh, we'll probably update, uh, update it and all the community about the next steps. Um, I think uh, one of the uh, most uh, sought after uh, features, and I also see there's a question about it, it's in a contract, uh, which is coming up. Uh, also, uh, since there's been a lot of interest in um, NFTs, uh, it's uh, it's one of the things that we kind of fast tracked. And uh, yesterday we did announce a major partnership for uh, NFTs here uh, in Brazil, uh, which is also an interesting topic for us to talk about because uh, one of the first questions uh, that this artist, which is uh, like a really well known a global influencer uh, with over 40 million uh, YouTube uh, subscribers, uh, one of the first topics he asked was, uh, what about energy use? You know, so I, I believe uh, all the um, uh, all the projects and companies looking to build on top of networks, uh, any blockchain, uh, they're going to be uh, mindful of that. So I think that's that makes it even more um, interesting and uh, uh, pressing for us to address uh, all these these issues, as uh, Professor Alex just uh, outlined. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I think now we are ready to get a bit more understanding of what merge mining means. So the Ather Network offers this feature, which is uh, merge mining, which uh, in a nutshell, as far as I understand, allows Bitcoin miners to mine both two different coins, one uh, Bitcoin and uh, the um, Hathor Network coin. So 
Can you explain, Ian, what is the uh, point, uh, what is the advantage for, for miners to practice this uh, merge mining uh, um, activity and uh, how that is key in order to make this Ator Green initiative function? Yeah, sure. Uh, merge mining is an interesting concept. If I believe it was uh, Satoshi himself who, who on a Bitcoin talk um, post back in 2010 uh, talked about the possibility of chains uh, sharing the hash rate. So uh, as you said, uh, it's pretty spot on. It, it allows uh, Bitcoin miners, actually uh, miners of any coin that uses, in our case, uh, SHA-256 uh, to mine at the same time uh, Bitcoin or or maybe Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin SV and also HCR, which is our coin. So they're going to be using uh, the same work uh, to, to mine both coins, they don't have any extra costs. Uh, this is already something important uh, to understand in the green perspective, because uh, in a sense, uh, for uh, mining ACR, you are not using uh, extra energy. So uh, it's already a very green uh, uh, chain, uh, if you take uh, this perspective, because it, there's no extra energy used. So on top of that, we, we want to have this uh, program, the Hatter Green program to incentivize the miners as well. But uh, in, in, the, uh, in the very uh, basis of it is already a, a very green in the ESG compliance network uh, itself uh, by using version mining. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually curious, uh, is it possible to do this merge mining with the more than just two coins? Is it possible, like for example, to merge simultaneously three, four, five uh, different coins, or it just it just works with two? Uh, no, it, it, it does. It's possible to mine multiple coins at the same time, I mean, as long as uh, one of the coins support it. So in our case, um, we, we support merge mining. So uh, you can merge mine ACR with, let's say, Bitcoin. But if you have uh, other uh, other coins that also support merge mining, so you could uh, mer uh, mine Bitcoin, uh, HDR, and these other coins. So uh, it's really good because uh, the same work is being used to secure all these all these networks, right? Uh, and and for uh, proof of work uh, chains, that's the most important thing that this work is being used to secure secure these chains. And also to answer your first question about what's the uh, uh, the benefit for us for using it, uh, it allows us to to gain a very high uh, hash rate uh, very quickly because we are kind of tapping into the um, into the hash rate of the Bitcoin network, which is the most secure one. So I mean that that was the uh, the main idea that we wanted uh, to achieve when we uh, when we decided to move forward with merge mining. Uh, since we are proof of work chain uh, security and the hash rate is it's fundamental, so uh, achieving a high hash rate is is super important. Okay, so for the audience, I think that uh, it's worth to uh, simplify this uh, this system. As far as I understand, basically, if you are a Bitcoin miner, you might want to um, tap into your project, start mining. Uh, the Hathor network token as well with this merged mining procedure. Prove you that as a, as a Bitcoin miner, I'm using renewable energies. And once I prove it to you, I get rewards with the, with the Hathor network token. And that's basically the incentive that we are providing. Yeah, that, that's correct. I mean, on top of the uh, ACR that you're going to be mining, uh, you, we're also going to provide extra ACR for those who can uh, who can prove they use uh, renewable energy, green energy. And I saw there was uh, one question here about uh, if you do merge mining, uh, you would return uh, on BTC or HCR would be any less. No, um, you don't have uh, any uh, performance impact uh, by use merge mining. So your BTC uh, rewards would be the same and HCR also would be the same as if you were doing uh, solo mining. Yeah. Awesome. That was a good, that was a good point. That's, that was a good question to ask. Uh, so maybe Alex, uh, what do you think about this system of incentives for miners? Do you think that it's, it can be a viable solution to tackle this, uh, environmental problem of Bitcoin? 
time. Well, I think he. Sorry, I think I was muted. muted. I think I was muted. Uh, no, I think it's it's essential, right? There is a lot of press, negative press. There is a lot of noise against Bitcoin mining. Um, if we look from an economical perspective, Bitcoin averages half of the entire industry as market cap. Uh, I think that a lot of people, although they don't realize it, um, think that Bitcoin is is dirty uh, or dirt energy. A majority of Bitcoin is mined with hydro, which is already renewable. There, there is a lot of um, efforts of mining Bitcoin with natural gas and other forms of solar energy, wind, and so forth. So I think that naturally there is a lot of bad press around mining Bitcoin, which hurts the industry, um, devalues the, uh, the, the value of the currency. And if you have projects like the Hathor Green that incentivize and validate this, these miners to prove to the world that they're doing the right thing, that they're using renewable energy, that only validates the thesis of Bitcoin being this decentralized form of, uh, of improving uh, access to, to financial freedom to the wider audience in the world. So, so I think it's a, it's a very clever and elegant solution to minimize this uh, bad PR we're getting that not necessarily has, has been proven wrong in the global media. Sure, for sure. I think that a lot of that uh, bad press coverage comes specifically for the reason that a lot of people don't see the value of Bitcoin and, and therefore um, they just see the, the energy consumption of it. Um, we have an interesting question from the audience now. Uh, so if our mining rigs are not yet set up, can we still participate in the Ather Green project? That's for you, Jan. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll also uh, talk a bit more about the uh, the process. So uh, so far, it's uh, pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, you can go to our uh, website, uh, hatter.green, uh, and uh, check out the project. And also, there is an application form that you can fill out. Uh, so a uh, pretty straightforward uh, application process. As I said, this is kind of like a, a pilot for us. We're also going to learn a lot about it and improve the uh, uh, this project in the next few months. So uh, this is um, this is the, uh, the the way that miners can apply. And, and to answer the other questions, um, you definitely can apply uh, as as uh, as soon as your uh, mine rigs are set up. You know, uh, we uh, envision to have the, the uh, first batch of applications open uh, until uh, July. But uh, if you're going to be mining and you do use uh, renewable energies, you can just uh, get in touch with us and. Uh, we'll make sure that uh, you are properly rewarded because in the end, that, that's what we want, right? Uh, so um, even though we, we're kind of expecting to close applications in July, um, you can uh, you can get in touch with us and we'll make sure to uh, to include you in the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was actually going to be my next question. So exactly like how people could... Uh, could apply to this program. Yeah, it's 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 pretty straightforward. You know, just a simple form on the website. Uh, in the future, uh, as we learn from this first experience, we might uh, improve it, change it a bit. Uh, depending on the number of applications, uh, we need to might need to make things more automated. But uh, uh, right now, it's just a simple form that you have to fill out. Uh, we will be also uh, uh, getting some help from our friends uh, in F2 to uh, to do some of the processing and. Uh, but yeah, uh, pretty straightforward. Yeah, and, uh, and it's yeah. very interesting what Jan is doing because just wanted to point this out. We've been looking at investing in green Bitcoin mining for a long time. We've got a few products in the pipeline. It is one of the major challenges in this industry is the methodology behind validating a green or a renewable uh, or, or Bitcoin that was mined with renewable energy. So, so that's one of the reasons we're very interested as an investment firm in the Hathor Green project because of the methodology that they're putting together. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, another question from the audience. Uh, El Milan is uh, new in the conversation. She's asking, what is Hathor Green? Have I missed something? 
So maybe uh, Ian can just in a nutshell resume what Other Green is about, just to sum up. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, just recap a bit. Just uh, it's this initiative from uh, Hatter Network to incentivize uh, miners who are using uh, green renewable energy uh, for mining uh, Hatter. And also, you know, since we use merge mining, they're going to likely be also mining Bitcoin or other coins. So uh, any miners who use renewables, uh, they can apply to the program. Uh, we're going to validate uh, their, their application. And if uh, they are using a renewable uh, energy sources, uh, they're going to get an extra uh, reward in, in HDR uh, every month, kind of uh, trying to incentivize the good behavior uh, in the uh, mining industry. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ian. So yeah, if anyone in the chat is actually uh, a miner, can just uh, check out Hathor's website and see uh, how this uh, initiative works. And uh, if you care about making your mining sources cleaner, that could be a solution. So yeah, we have the, the website is um, hathor.green. Right. Uh, so we, we have another question from the audience. Uh, regarding uh, uh, the mining, uh, basically, um, source of energy. So with most of the mining hash power still coming from China, how um, how do we see the transition to the green initiative look like and how long might that take? I guess that's more a question uh, for you, Alex. Sure, uh, I can try to tackle that question. So uh, it's important to understand that Yes, a good portion of Bitcoin is, is being mined in China. Every day that's becoming less and less. There is a current trend of uh, Chinese miners looking for other solutions or other places to mine around the world. Um, and then within China, if you, if you do your research, you will understand that the top tier miners are already mining with hydro, right? And that's a lot of the associations that we're now in China in the rainy season. There's a good portion of them, which is not the majority, that still mines with coal and other forms of non-renewable energies. But China as a government is, is really coming down on, on that kind of use of energy for Bitcoin, which, which probably is one of the reasons uh, why we've been seeing this bad press surrounding Chinese Bitcoin miners. Um, if you go around the world and you look at renewable energies, they're very competitive on the pricing. Uh, you talk about gas, you talk about hydro, uh, mixes of renewables. They're becoming very, very competitive with the kilowatt, watt, kilowatt hour costs of running a competitive mining rig. So if the question is, how do we see the transition from green initiatives and how long it might take, I think we're going to see a very, a, a large portion of the Bitcoin network being mined with renewable energies in the next three to four years. And, th and that's one of our key focuses as an investment firm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, that's quite something to that, Giovanni. Uh, sorry, Ian, what did you say? Yeah, if I could add, add something yeah, to that, yeah, yeah. I also think. I think there's a lot of um, uh, the initiative has to come also from the market side. So, uh, you know, if people and institutions, they uh, uh, they make this a priority and, you know, they put a premium on it, uh, it's definitely going to uh, make this transition uh, faster. So, you know, if we have like a premium on Bitcoin being mined on, you know, a renewable energy, definitely we're going to see more miners uh, switching to uh, to this uh, energy sources. So I think there's also, you know, a lot of people uh, demanding for it, but, you know, there's going to be an economic incentive also towards it. You know, uh, companies that are going to require you know, only build their projects on uh, on green chains, let's say, like that. So I think there's a lot of the uh, market demand that's going to push this, uh, this transition. Yeah, and Yan is completely right, right? You have like about $50 trillion coming into the ESG market. A lot of that is pushed by the Biden administration. And that money is looking to allocate in green chains. That money is looking to allocate to miners that can offset their carbon emissions. Uh, it's just a demand and supply condition of the current market. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, okay, so now we have another question from the audience, which is uh, regarding the token uh, that is available on um, for mining uh, on Ator Network. So, are the tokens available for, pur for purchase? Ask the source. Maybe. Uh, yeah. yeah, sure. We are available on uh, multiple exchanges: uh, Coin, um, Asindex, Coin Metro, uh, Q Trade. Um, I also see there are some. Uh, some questions about uh, extra listings. Of course, this is something that we're always looking for, but uh, can't comment a lot on it. Okay, cool. So now I think that it's uh, time to welcome another guest uh, to the conversation. Hi, Daniel. How are uh, you? Uh, good. So for those who don't know, this is Daniel Huang, a representative of uh, F2 pool and Stakefish mining pool service provider who is going to give us some perspective from the point of view of a mining pool service provider, how um, the system offered by Hathor can actually be implemented. So uh, Daniel, as far as I understand, uh, the, the mining pool uh, you work for is uh, the first one that actually um, implement the uh, Ator Green initiative. Is it correct? Uh, yeah, I believe so. And I guess Jan can confirm that as well. Yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, we'll be working with uh, Actual to get more information and validate everything uh, so we can uh, determine the, uh, the origin sources and where the miners are located and you know, kind of uh, cross-check a lot of this uh, information to uh, determine the uh, energy being used. Okay, so if, I'm, if I well understand, the miners uh, working for your mining pool, Daniel, are already um, providing uh, Ian and his company some uh, proof that they are actually using uh, renewable energies. Um, I, I don't believe so yet, but I think that audit process should be um, be rolling out with with the Hathor team. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, as I said, uh, we are starting the applications uh, today. So uh, any miner can go to our website, hathor.green and, and start this process. And then we're gonna be working with uh, F2Pool to uh, get more insights into it, uh, kind of uh, validate uh, the application, uh, cross check it with, uh, let's say uh, multiple sources of information uh, to make sure we can uh, kind of um, uh, you know, be sure that the, the, the miner is actually, uh, you know, where he is and using the uh, the energy sources uh, he claims. So yeah, the, this process is gonna be starting today and we are happy to have the uh, support from uh, f uh, to help us in that. I, I, I do wanna say that it is completely uh, voluntary on behalf of the miners and mining, mining farms um, who do elect to uh, kind of prove their renewable energy sourcing. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm very curious to know your perspective, Daniel. Um, like, how do how do miners uh, that are uh, working for your mining pools uh, view this uh, initiative that uh, la launched by Ian? So how, what, what's your thoughts on what's your thoughts on, on this system of incentives? Yeah, I, I, I can't um, speak um, for miners or mining farms and and just just to quickly clarify like the miners and mining farms don't work for us they're just clients of ours as f2 pool is a a service provider that just kind of provides um, hash rate aggregation to find blocks together with with the miners but um, I, I think in general the the value of sort of um, the ethos that Hathor has proposed with their Hathor green program is quite important um, in in incentivizing this type of good behavior, where good behavior is um, the reliance and and perhaps even transition or switch to to renewable energy. I, I think a good ana analogy is kind of how we've seen um, the Bitcoin networks and its and right the the values and, and the properties of decentralized consensus be secured by miners and node operators. Right, it's it's essentially a side effect that uh, of the the main main motivator that miners have for profit, 
And so in, in this case, since Hathor Green is providing incentivization for miners, uh, right, that's additional additional profit in their pockets um, to, to go about perhaps um, attesting that they are using renewable energy. And if the, if the profit is, is high enough that, you know, there may be potential switching from alternate non-renewable energy sources to renewable energy sources. And that I think is a net, a good net benefit. And, and I think that at, at least from the perspective of F2 pool and, and other blockchain infrastructure, Sir, service providers, um, right? That's something that we can we can back, right? It's a win-win scenario where, right, everyone kind of eats, <laughs> and then the outcomes are are positive in terms of the uh, climate stewardship and ESG goals and, and motivations. So, yeah, I think that's that's very important to achieve as a goal, and I see that our audience is very excited about this topic. We have a lot of involvement, a lot of uh, questions. Uh, next question is the following. Uh, we have a quest very interesting question here. So is Ather Green for large mining companies or is it also for, let's say, an individual who's mining but can prove it run off of solar panels they have installed on their house? Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I mean, for us, uh, as long as you're using green energy, uh, you can you are eligible for for this initiative so uh it's it's really nice to see you have individuals who are mining and especially using uh green energy on their house so yeah definitely mm -hmm. okay cool so you don't need to be um plugged into one of these large pools to participate that's that's great so now i would like to ask you uh i would like to ask alex a uh, question regarding uh, the usage of renewable energies for mining Bitcoin. A lot of critics say that one uh, negative aspect of renewable energies is that it's not as uh, constant as uh, non-renewables. And that is a major point why it's so difficult to convince miners to switch to renewables because uh, they cannot uh, keep, for example, um, mining rigs that work on solar power uh, switched on all day long because there is no... Um, solar power available all day long. So how do you see this problematic, Alex? That's a very good question, Giovanni, because, for example, we, um, we're we creating a fund to invest in Bitcoins that are mined via renewable energy or that are offset uh, by carbon credits, right? And, and we're rolling that out in the next couple of months. So we've been looking very closely to that. And that's one of the reasons why we're very excited with the Hathor Green project. But one thing is important to note, right? That That is part of the bad press that it's being generated. And it's part about the, the noise that it's being generated. You're right. And the general press is right to point out that if you're running your Bitcoin farm only on solar, Solar naturally or on average has a 20% efficiency. So if you have 100 megawatts of solar power, uh, you're going to get about 20 megawatts on average via the, via the course of time, right? But what people forget about is that other forms of renewable energy are not in that category of a 20% of a uh, efficiency rate. One of them, which is the major source of mining Bitcoin, is hydro. Uh, another one that has very efficiency, very high efficiency rates is natural gas. So, yes, you can do a mix. You can, you can mine with, with solar, you can mine with wind. Uh, and, if you can, and if you can baseline that with other renewable energy sources that are more constant at their production rate, such as natural gas or hydro, you will be able to achieve 100% capacity or 100% output of, of your energy input over the course of time. So, so just wanted to point out that there, there's a lot of negative press in the space, and that's why it's important for the audience and for ESG investors to investigate, research, and, and do their own due diligence to understand that 
mining cryptocurrencies via renewable energy is a very viable solution. And, and I agree with Jan, I think it's a solution that deserves a premium. Yeah, for sure. That's actually the information that we are trying to, um, to convey to our audience. So we have a question from the audience about this premium. So how, uh, how do you structure that premium? Would it be carbon credits? That's, uh, uh, that's a question for, for you, Ian, about how this premium is going to be uh, structured. Uh, in our case, what we're going to do is uh, whatever uh, you uh, you mine uh, on, on on our network uh, by using renewable energies, uh, you're going to get a percentage uh, extra uh, at the end of each month. So uh, and in the beginning, we're going to start with uh, 10%. So let's say if you mine um, uh, 10,000 coins uh, a month, uh, in the end of the month, we're going to uh, reward you with an extra uh, 10%, so a thousand coins uh, in that sense. So, uh, but I think uh, in the premium also in the sense that we're talking about Bitcoin and also Professor Alex was talking about, I think it's kind of uh, market forces, right? Uh, the market's gonna say uh, how much extra people are gonna, are gonna pay for, for a, uh, a green Bitcoin, let's call it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And uh, now we have another question, which is uh, more related to the partnership between Ator and uh, the F2 pool. So maybe that's something that uh, Daniel can can answer. So what is the nature of the partnership between your two guys? Yeah, I, partnership collaboration. I think um, we're we're definitely excited to support um, any initiatives that it is promoting this sort of climate stewardship. So uh, Hathor, Hathor has already, you know, for some time been providing merge mining um, for uh, for F2 pool. So uh, our miners at MyBitcoin um, do get merge mining rewards through Hathor tokens. But also in addition to this Hathor Green program, um, you, you'll get the additional bonus rewards as well. So um, it, it's definitely, we, we, right, so F2 pool um, and Stakefish has, has been part of like the blockchain infrastructure um, carbon working group that has been investigating and designing uh, better solutions to climate stewardship. Um, and so, right, it's, it's just our support. I think the, the method by which this type of um, switch to renewables or reliance on renewables or, uh, or benefit from renewables is, is the right uh, approach, so. Okay. Um, now, uh, Omar SY is asking, what are the benefits of the Hathor network for and better than other uh, chain besides the aspect of using green energy, uh, UBD, where do you see the price? Um, I guess the main point here is what's the benefit of uh, Hathor network besides the aspect of using green energy? So what are the other strong points of the network? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I, I believe we do have an architecture that enables us to scale uh, on layer one uh, level uh, more than the traditional uh, blockchains in the space. That's kind of how we started. Uh, and also one of the uh, main aspects uh, that we're looking um, to achieve uh, is making it uh, a easy to use blockchain. So you don't need to, to be a specialist. Uh, anyone that knows a bit of coding can, can use us. Uh, there's no solidity, there's no gas fees. Uh, we have fast and free transactions. So this is this is for us uh, the way we envision that we're gonna make uh, blockchain technologies available to the broader public and, and companies. So uh, it's uh, it's easy to use. I mean, a lot of um, a lot of our advisors and and people use the analogy of doing what like WordPress did for for the web. You know, uh, it enabled uh, a, a larger uh, amount of people to come into and create their own websites and you know just experience and, and have an on online presence. Uh, we can all, we also want to do the same thing. We uh, want to be easy to use at the level that uh, most companies and people can create their own uh, blockchain based projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, I have a question now regarding the uh, Ator Green initiative because 
This is, uh, of course, a very admirable initiative that has a very admirable goal. But what I was wondering is the scalability of this initiative. So can this other green uh, model be kind of uh, used as Im imitated or taken as a model by other blockchains in order to maximize its, its impact on this environmental problem of Bitcoin? Um, and it, maybe Jan can, can give you, you can give us your thought about this uh, scalability of the initiative. Yeah, I mean, I sure hope so. As I said, this is kind of like a pilot program. Uh, we're we're going to learn a lot from it, uh, improve it. So, um, and, and I think this kind of uh, inspiration uh, thing that you said is important. So I do hope that we see other uh, other projects also uh, adopting more uh, uh, these this initiatives. And I think that depends a lot on uh, the market response to it. So we, we do get a lot of miners interested and then people see there is value in it uh definitely we're going to see more more of this uh in this space mm -hmm. alex what's what are your thoughts about the scalability of this uh, merged mining solution that Ator is providing to tackle the bitcoin's environmental problem do you see it yeah, so sure, for sure and, uh, and i think it's an add-on right so if you look at Bitcoin over the recent years, it went from its original purpose of being a peer-to-peer -peer payment system to being a store of value. And uh, there's a lot of discussions of like how Bitcoin has become this very innovative approach on how you can store you, uh, your, your inputs of energy or, or your investments in energy, right? Because... Like Michael Saylor says, if if I generate a um, hundred megawatts of energy via my very expensive capex hydro plant, and I don't utilize that hundred megawatts, it's gone. Right? There is no way for me to get it back. But if you can store the value of it in a Bitcoin, that has become one of the greatest innovations in the energy space in the last couple of years. But as we all know, Bitcoin um, is not a, a protocol that is suited for high transaction output. Uh, you, can't, you can't compare Visa and MasterCard and Amex uh, and all these other forms of transaction cashless payments with Bitcoin. It's just, just not there, right? So we need solutions like Hathor that are going to provide that additional layer to make very fast throughput transactions. And, and being at a, on a green chain, on a chain that requires less energy, I think it's a benefit for both sides of the industry, not only for the people that are Bitcoin maximists and want to use Bitcoin as a store of value, but also as users who want to use the Bitcoin network for daily transactions of, of payments and, and uh, cash transactions, smart contracts and other innovative forms of uh, blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an add-on and a good pair. Okay, thanks, Alex. So now I would like to ask, uh, I would like to, to ask if, it's, if there is any risk involved in this uh, merged mining practice. Maybe Daniel, since he's the representative of mining pool provider, can uh, answer this question. Then maybe Jan can also uh, tell us what's his view. Is there any risk? involved in this practice um maybe if you could clarify where where risk on whose behalf uh because as far as i heard um there is a small there is some sort of risk when you uh, simultaneously mine uh, two separate uh coins because there is a um, higher risk of 51 percent attack since the miners don't have uh, to um i mean uh, the miners are somehow facilitated in uh, a possible 51% attack on, uh, on, on, on the network. So, yeah, I, I think with, with maybe, um, maybe the answer is much simpler than we, we might expect, but right. Obviously a network would, would benefit from having its own set of, uh, uh, node operators and, and miners, um, that doesn't have to be merge merge mind. So, 
Um, it's, it's probably just as simple as that. Hmm. Jan, uh, have you, uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Because I read that part yeah, on, your, sure. on your website. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, since the uh, the miners are getting the, uh, the the rewards extra at the same time as they're mining Bitcoin, uh, definitely there are some incentives, you know, and uh, less penalties for them. Let's say, let's put it like that. Uh, but I mean, from from our perspective, the goal is always increasing the hash rate, having it distributed. Um, so uh, the the more miners we get, the, the harder it's going to become for for people to do this kind of attack. And I mean, so far, uh, even on larger uh, merge mine merge mine coins, uh, we haven't seen any kind of behavior like that from the miners. Especially uh, when we partner with uh, institutions such as F2Pool, uh, we, we see that this risk decreases a lot because they would be the ones that have to uh, to conduct this sort of uh, attack uh, in the sense of trying to uh, do a 51%. So I think that the, uh, the risk uh, is greatly reduced uh, by doing this kind of a high level partnerships and you know, having good relationships with, with the miner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now I have other questions from the audience. So um, this is about the latest news that we, we heard a couple of days ago. So with El, El Salvador's news that came out yesterday about mining, using ge geothermal energy to mine Bitcoin, have you guys thought about approaching them about merged mining Hathor? Uh, definitely, it's a, it's a good idea. You know, uh, we're always looking for more miners. Uh, uh, but in the end, it's, it's, it's a decision that the miners have to, have to take. But uh, yeah. The more miners that we have, as I just said, the better for for the network and the security. So uh, we are going to try and talk to uh, you know all, all miners possible and uh, and get them to uh, to also merge mine hacker. Okay, cool. So we have uh, we have a lot of questions from the audience. I'm very I'm very pleased to see so much participation. Guys, don't hesitate to uh, to ask. Some more questions. We have some more time to ask them. So this is a this is something about the um, structure, the organization of uh, Hathor. So uh, Omar Sy is asking, how are you planning to decentralize the Hathor network from Hathor Labs? If that's uh, yeah, sure. Option. Yeah, sure. I mean, like uh, as of today, the uh, network is uh, one hundred percent open and decentralized. So uh, uh, for us, we always love the uh, Bitcoin philosophy that uh, anyone can run a node and validate the transactions. You know, this is also something important that um, uh, the miners can can do and, and try and reverse transactions. But as, a, as long as kind of you have like your own full node that's following the rules, you could uh, not um, not follow what the miners uh, are trying to do. Um, so for us, having this. Uh, uh, decentralization or being able uh, to run a full node yourself. You know, I could run a full node, anyone, you don't need specialized hardware. Uh, this in itself is already a decentralized network. Uh, obviously, uh, I understand that at this moment, um, uh, Hatter Labs is the main uh, developer of the protocol and uh, has a large impact on the decisions. But this is something that gradually uh, we, we're looking forward to more companies uh, building on it and also contributing to the protocol. So our code is on GitHub. Uh, it's open source. Anyone can create a pull request there. Uh, the team is going to analyze it. And uh, the more companies build on it, the better. You know, uh, I'd love to see like 5, 10, 20 companies uh, developing products, uh, solutions, and also uh, contributing to the uh, to the protocol development. You know, it's I think it's kind of uh, our dream, uh, the moment that we actually don't need the uh, Hatter Labs to be kind of the, uh, the steward of, of the, uh, uh, of the uh, protocol, to have it kind of completely decentralized as, uh, as it happens with Bitcoin. Yeah, I think that uh, a lot of our viewers are looking forward to, for, to a version, um, to a world where uh, we have this decentralized uh, open source protocols that are also environmentally friendly uh, so that's that's a great goal to have but now i would like to ask you uh, we saw not long ago that uh, um, a mining uh, 
initiative was launched by uh, Elon Musk and uh, Michael Saylor. It's uh, an initiative uh, aimed at making Bitcoin more environmentally friendly, and it was called it's called Bit the Bitcoin Mining Council. Uh, I was curious to know if uh, you have any plans, uh, or you have yeah, if you have any plans to uh, kind of collaborate with this initiative. Uh, I think our, any initiative in in this area is very good. Um, and in regards to collaboration, I don't know, maybe in the future. Uh, being very honest in the uh, short term, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but it, it would be a good thing. You know, it's not like uh, we're close to it and or we have any objections, but uh, maybe it's mm -hmm. going to happen. I don't know. Maybe Alex uh, can uh, give us a couple of, uh, of his views on this initiative if he thinks that it's something that uh, can be somehow compatible with, uh, with what uh, Ian is trying to accomplish. Yeah, I think that uh, in general, there, it, it's driven by market demands, right, and, and market dynamics. Uh, like I was mentioning, we're projected to see like a tenfold increase on ESG investments in the next three to five years. And obviously, Elon Musk, Michael Saylor, and some of the other whales in the space are looking to capture that. And not only to capture that, but to try to solve our global climate change problem is a win-win scenario for everyone, not only in the blockchain industry, but just in the planet. So we, I, I foresee that we're going to see more and more initiatives like the Bitcoin Mining Council. And I welcome projects like Jan's projects and other projects out there to join forces and, and try to uh, come together into innovative solutions that address those two key points, right? One is the demand for cleaner energy solutions. And the other one is how do we supply that demand? And projects like Hathor Green are trying to solve that supply uh, question. So my, my forecast is that we're going to continue to see a growth in efforts coming from uh investors and, and other organizations like the bitcoin mining council and most likely we're going to see a growth and and solutions like hathor green okay great so i think that now we can uh, start wrapping things up uh, we we have one more we can uh, ask one more question from the audience and then uh, some final remarks so uh, we have emperor Mitensify who is asking what are your Q2 2021 targets and are you on track to accomplish them, Ian? Yeah, sure. Um, I have to remember now all, all the uh, all what we had on the roadmap for, for Q2. I believe, uh, as I said before, and then the contracts are, are the uh, most uh, awaited feature uh, that we are working on them right now. Um, also, as I mentioned before, we decided to fast track a bit the NFT features uh, and supports because it's just uh, such a, a sought after topic for for this. So it was in Q3 or Q4, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, we already have some initiatives uh, in this area popping up. Um, also, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, uh, Explorer redesign that we had, uh, it's already underway, starting with extra functionality. Uh, I'd say that a new redesign in the uh, UI is going to take a bit longer, but uh, we're already uh, adding new features and improving the service. Um, and um, I, those are the uh, the main ones. Well, I also on the business side, partnerships with uh, consultancies and, and software houses that could build on half a network is, is on track. Uh, we're already uh, in touch with, uh, with several of them. Um, yeah, I believe these are kind of the, the main ones that I can remember the top of my head mm -hmm. awesome we'll be closely monitoring the progress of your project uh, throughout this year so now i would like to um give you the opportunity to make some final remarks if you think uh the audience needs to know something more maybe start starting from daniel if you want to make a, some final remarks yeah i i just want to say that um 
like the fact that Hathor is is promoting and is it at the network level supporting ESG um, goals, uh, I, I think is wonderful. And I think that's why we at F2 Pool definitely wanted to share and support this, this initiative. Okay, Alex, some final thoughts? Yeah, sure. To, to add to Daniel's point, as a firm, we're looking very closely, like I mentioned, to opportunities to share with our investors uh, funds and other investment vehicles that invest in, in opportunities like Hather Green and, and other uh, Bitcoin uh, investment vehicles that mitigate the footprint of carbon emissions. So we're very glad to continue um, partnering and supporting Hather Green and this effort because like I mentioned, I think it's a win-win not only for the blockchain industry, but for humanity in general. Great. Jan, do you want to add something else? Yeah, I just want to say that, uh, well, first, thank you, Alex, uh, uh, Daniel, and you uh, for, for hosting us. Um, but also that I uh, really do hope that this project, uh, well, not only is successful in the sense that we, we do get a lot of miners uh, applying and uh, uh, hopefully someday we can have, you know, 100% of uh, ACR mining uh, based on renewable energies, but also this could kind of spark some, uh, some sort of um, uh, inspiration in other projects to also adopt uh, some initiatives like this. Uh, definitely there's demand, as Professor Alex said, um, it's something that uh, it's going to benefit uh, everyone. So uh, hopefully this can be uh, kind of an inspiration for, for more projects to come like this. Yeah, I actually really hope that a lot of other projects will follow your example, because this is a very important uh, target to achieve getting Bitcoin completely on renewables. So for those who are watching, don't forget to check out uh, the website uh, of Hathor Green, which is green.hathor.network, and uh, check out the very interesting system of, in of incentives that uh, Jan has prepared for incentivizing miners to um, use renewable energies. So thanks a lot for watching, everyone. It was a great conversation. I'm Giovanni, your host.